we denounce it now in the divine name of Jesus Christ. And we apply the blood over every life that is under my, uh, which is under the sound of my voice. And those who are on their way, let your anointing fall in this place right now. And we say, bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed us till we want no more. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed us till we want no more. We're going to give you an excellent praise this morning because you are an excellent God. And someone in the bottom of their spirit ought to say, you are worthy to be praised. It's in the name of Jesus. Just for a moment, in the name of Jesus, we do pray. Put your hands together and say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How many know that our life is in the Lord's hand? Hallelujah. And he's worthy to be praised. He's our joy. He's our strength. Hallelujah. Oh, 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 I am your son. You are my father. Oh, how you love to love me. Oh, you are my source. There is You're my everything. 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 You're my ever
standing here and it's only because you made a way hallelujah 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 can you just take about 60 seconds and give god a praise hallelujah reverence his name you're here for a reason hallelujah Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. How y'all doing this morning, Poplar Spring? You ready to worship with your youth this morning? If you don't mind, if you could stand up on your feet. We're going to sing two songs for you this morning. Of course, glorifying God. But one says, you, we sing the song solely to you, God. And the other one says, all for me. He gave it all. He did it all for us. Okay? Hallelujah.
Say, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, please don't do it without me. Lord, don't do it without me. Oh, Lord, whatever. sing it one more time. I said, Lord, if you're healing, Lord, healing in this season, please don't do it. Don't do it without me, Jesus. Don't do it without me. Oh.
that you cannot do it without the Lord. I know this sounds like riddle and rhyme to you, but what I've learned that when I need the Lord, I like to say, I, I mean, this, 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 this is my go-to scripture to let me know that the Lord is on my side. But he said, first, I got to trust in the Lord. Not sometimes, but with all my heart. And when I want to lean somewhere else, I got to lean not to my own understanding. And when it don't look right in all my ways, when I can't call on nobody else, I got to acknowledge him. And look, he just won't uh, bring me out of the storm, but he'll be in the storm with me because he's going to direct my path. So, Lord, whatever you're doing, and somebody say, I'm in a season right now, and whatever you're going to do, Lord, don't do it without me. Lord, you may forget some things, but don't forget me, Lord. I've been, some, somebody's been waiting on a healing. Somebody's been waiting on a, a breakthrough. And while you're going through your season, talk to yourself and say, weeping may endure for a night, but my joy coming in the morning. So Lord, whatever you got to do, if I have to walk all by myself, Lord, if I have to tarry by myself, Lord, don't do it without me, Lord. Don't do it. Do it without me. Amen. Give God some praise. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I want to, I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but I want to let you know right now, your season ain't to kill you, but your season's to make you better. Yeah, I want you to know that right now. It seems like you have more do-nothing days and sometimes hours, but you watch out. God, you're going to come out on the end. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. Somebody know what I'm talking about this morning. Be real with yourself. You had to be broken. You had to go through it. But Lord, look what God has in store for you. So let God run the process. Let me preach. Let God do the process. Let God, let him run the process sometimes. I know you don't want to take the medicine, but keep on taking it. I, I, I know you, I know you're tired of being the strong one in the family, but, but keep on, hold your head up, square your shoulders up. God has a blessing for you. I, I, I got to preach to the mothers this morning, but I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. Just know that the God of yesterday, the God of today and the God of tomorrow he has you in the hollow of his hands. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Just, if you don't do nothing else today, just hold on. Just for a little while. And help is on the way. Hold on. And your help is on the way. All right, all right. All right. Let me, let me make this right. Let me preach to the mothers this morning. Let's get, let's get excited, all right? Again, mm, I know what it is like to be in a season. All my season have not been light and joy. But anybody ever had a dark season? Self didn't even want to get self up out of the bed. And you were tired of being sick and tired. Y'all, there's some dark seasons. That's why you appreciate the other side of the mountain. All right. Real quick. Turn with me to the book or the letter or the epistle of Romans. Romans, the 16th chapter. And we're going to have one verse. One verse. 
We're going home. Romans, the 16th chapter, and uh, I found this one verse nestled, and I think it's fitting for the wives, the mothers, the women of this church. Verse 13 out of Romans, the 16th chapter, Paul writes, Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother, who has been a mother to me too. Amen. You may be seated. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother, who has been a mother to me too. Amen. I want to talk for the next little while, if, if the Lord allow me on this lesson. I want to talk from the thought, you've been a mother to me. Amen. You've been a mother to me. Now, when I looked at this piece of scripture, like always, I think of my biological mother, who is my first of, of anything, that the first one who held me, the first one who loved me, the first one that took care of me, my biological mother. I remind my son all the time, he says, uh, well, you know, we need to do something for mama. I said, I, I, I do something for mama every day. That's your mama, and you need to take care of your mama. But I also think about the extended arms of those who have been mothers to me in this thing called gospel preaching. I think about my mother down in Winsboro. Mother Queen, who with a stern look, and don't say much, I can see the approval and disapproval in her face and in her actions, who out of a nowhere will call me and say, son, how are you doing? That's a mother to me. I think about those patriarchs who's gone on like, Sister Walker, who was a mother to me. Now, when you got past all the adjectives and the verbs and what was on her mind, she would say, Reverend, you know I'm praying for you. Minnie Walker taught me to be, if I, if I can't be real with myself, I can't be real with nobody. I think about Sister Felicia Milam. Some of y'all may not know none of these None of these folk, but, but with that red lipstick, I probably went through more white shirts at the dry cleaners, and they said we can't get the stain out. I don't know what kind of lipstick she had. And uh, if, if my wife didn't trust me, she would have been on divorce to me because I had lipstick all on my collar and on my face. But she was an encourager. Am I right? Oh, I think about Miss Madden, who was a mother to me. That when I came to Poplar, I probably weighed a good 225, 230, 237, <laughs> 240. All right, 240, 240. Somewhere, somewhere in them teens, all right. But I, I'm, I'm reminded that from Miss Madden's house, to Mother Durham's house, and you used to sit right there, I was going to eat. And I was not going to get up from the table until I finished my plate. And, and then after you leave Mother Durham's house, you got to go to Miss Ollie's house, and you got to get those fried potato pies. Come on, somebody. And, 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 and I just saw the Lord increasing my territory. But they were mothers to me. Am I talking right? Oh, my love, Miss Ruth Wilson, who would invite me to lunch on Wednesday at the first Bible study. And lunch to me was something simple, but Miss Mother Ruth would have T bone steak, baked potato, a salad, and dessert. 
And when I put all that in my system, she, now, I hope she's watching this. Where she, then you have to go through a three-hour dissertation with her because you're going to be there three hours after you eat. And by the time you get up, it's 6.30 and it's time to come to the second Bible study. But she was a mother to me. These ladies and many more in this church have held a great place in my heart because they did not just allow me to pastor them. They showed me motherly love. So on this day, what I call a day of hallmark, to where we recognize the women, the mothers of our congregation, we salute them and we thank God. The question was put before me one time, should you preach a Mother Day sermon? I was somewhat baffled because we understand that Mother's Day has nothing to do with a biblical sound uh, uh, knowledge of what a mother is. Mother Day somewhat fits in the category of those holidays such as Valentine's and, and uh, 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 things like that, Father's Day. And we put Mother's Day in there. So I asked the question, should we preach or should we celebrate Mother's Day? My answer to that, and I may be wrong in my answer, is yes, we should celebrate Mother's Day. Why? Because we see the strong manly masculinity of mankind or humankind driven by men in the Bible, but we still need to see the tender touch of a woman through the scriptures. We need to see God's hand moving on one man, helping us through the process. During the period of creation, as Deacon so uh, 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 expositely, uh, expositely told us, God saw a need for a one man. And through one man, we have generations. Am I talking right? And you must understand that even the day that was created by Ella Jarvis back in 1908, Mother's Day, it was to come to com commemorate a day of celebration for women. And then later on in 1914, the day was actually documented. But afterwards, after Mother's Day had been commercialized so much, she tried to denounce the holiday. Let us not forget about our beautiful uh, uh, Coretta Scott King, who in 1968 took this day, Mother's Day, and she marched upon the streets of America to protest against un underprivileged women and underprivileged children. If you want to be a historian, let us not forget about the ancient Greeks and the ancient Romans, how they came to honor the mother goddess and, and uh, uh, Isabella and to honor her for being a, 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 a mother who gives life. So my question is, where does Mother's Day fit in the Bible? Where do you see it? Can you, can you see Mother's Day in the Bible? There, 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 there are many things I would like to talk about, but, but when I think about a mother, somebody ought to get happy here in a minute. But when I, when I think about a mother, biblically, it takes me to a place called Calvary. I don't know, I know I'm right. Mothers have done great things in the Bible, but, but as Paul said in Galatians, God borrowed the womb of a woman. Oh, Lord, help me. To bring in the Savior of the world. Yeah. And then as she watched this young boy by the name of Jesus, she raised him, she reared him, she loved him. Matter of fact, she was his biggest cheerleader. And one day she has to turn him over to a mob to holler, crucify him. She understood the purpose of who Jesus was greater than anyone else. But it takes me to Calvary as she watches her boy die.
for sins that he did not commit. As he is bleeding from his head, she don't even recognize him because he's been beat all night long. Nails in his hands and nails riveting, but mama ain't left him yet. Come on, somebody. But watch, when you got a relationship, Jesus looks down and says, John, behold your mama, and mama, behold your son. I'm here to tell you, church, you ought to get excited about that because if there's ever been a time that you've seen a relationship between children or parents, you ought to say, that's it right there. That even in a bleeding, battered state, God saw fit to connect mama and child. Watch this. I'm not trying to exclude nobody, but I'm here to tell you that Mother's Day is needed this morning. Whether you birthed them, whether you bathed them, whether you watched over them, whether you had them, whether you covered them, they yours. Amen? And for parents and mothers who have lost children early, or for some reason or another, we still need you. Help me out, somebody. The reason this generation don't went crazy, because ain't no big mom no more. Help me out somebody. That, 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 ain't no big mamas no more. Big mama knew what came down the street. Big mama knew what came up the street. Big mama didn't feel nobody. If you wasn't acting right, she would let you know. Uh, somebody ought to say, we need some big mamas up in here. And when you get advice from big mama you didn't have to read it in a book you didn't have to google it you didn't have to go to the library because big mama only lived it and big mama know what's going on so do I need to preach Mother's Day as long as the earth is the Lord's and the fullness they I am I know it don't fit in in the rankings of Noah's Ark I know it don't fit in the rankings of a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I know it don't fit in the rankings of Daniels and the Lions Den. But we need some mamas around here, y'all. And look, check this out. Just like I had a hall of fame of, of women who were mothers to me, I'm pretty sure some of y'all got some women that were mamas to y'all this morning. Do I have a witness? Don't, don't, they, their name is not on your birth certificate. They, 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 there's no biological blood uh, running in your vein from them. But somebody ought to say, they was a mama to me. When I, when I almost lost my mind, they, they, they came to see about me. When I, when, when I didn't have nothing to eat, they gave me a little piece of meat they put in my mouth. Do I have a witness up in here? And some of us ought to realize that when we couldn't find a way out of nowhere, it was that person that, that you least expected came and put their arms around you and told you to run on and see what the end is going to be. So, you've been a mother to me. Simply, that's all that Paul is saying, and I'm almost done with you. I need to explain this one piece of scripture. I know you looked at it and said, where did Reb come up with that? Or where did Reb find that? I'm going to help you real quick. Paul writes to a, to a group of people in Rome who is excited about gospel preaching. And because they are excited... He has to, if you read the whole book of Romans, it deals with repentance, reconciliation. It deals with, somebody ought to say, second chance. That, that God so loved us that he gave us a second chance. It deals with what are the rules and regulations of salvation. So Paul is excited to tell the people that Jesus is just not a figment of their imagination, but he's real. And that you ought to be excited about Jesus. Now, when we roll back on this 16th chapter, we see that Paul is giving greetings to those who have helped him along the way. Matter of fact, if you read long enough, you see that he even writes to Timothy and his family, his beloved son, and he greets their mothers. But right here in chapter 16, in the 13th verse, he greets Rufus. Somebody lean over to your neighbor and say, who is Rufus? Y'all like y'all don't want to know who he is. 
I cut the sermon off right now. Now, one more time. Who is Rufus? I don't read about Rufus doing nothing spectacular in the Bible. I don't see Rufus nowhere uh, uh, around the cross, or I don't see him being commissioned. So why does Paul greet this young man by the name of Rufus and his household? It ties itself in that if you go to Mark, the 15th chapter, in verse 21, in your reading time, in your pleasure, you'll find out who Rufus is. But I'll help you out real quick. Remember that incident of when Jesus was walking down a road called Bel de la Rosa and he was carrying a cross? Do, do y'all remember that? And that was a man by the name of Simeon the Cyrene. Y'all remember that? And Simeon had brought his two boys along the way, one by the name of Rufus and the other one by the name of Alexandria. Yeah, that, that's who he is. Matter of fact, it can, can I be candid with you? It was two black brothers and their daddy at the place of Calvary when Jesus died. That, that, I, I mean, that's biblical now. I, I didn't make that up. Matter of fact, if you want me to get real technical with it, he comes from the northern region of Africa. So now, Paul is on the other side of the water. Rufus and them are trying to set up church. But then Paul says this, I want to thank God for Rufus. Evidently, they had a, a unique relationship. But on top of that, I want to thank Rufus and his mama. Can I say it like that? Because she's been a mama to me. It, it sounds better when I say it like that, y'all. Yeah, I want to thank Rufus, but who I really want to thank, I want to thank Rufus' mama. Why you want to thank Rufus' mama, Paul? Because you got to understand this. Paul, he, before he was Paul, he was something else, y'all. Somebody say he was something else. And some of us had to deal with some folk that's something else. Uh, but think about this. She saw what he could be. Uh, she saw what God had for him. Uh, she saw all that God was going to do for him. Uh, and can I say this real quick? The reason I thank God for women of the church who love the Lord when other folk want to give up, uh, somebody ought to say, I thank God for women. I thank God for mamas who don't mind praying for me. Do I have a witness up in here? Somebody ought to shout right there because you know you ain't here all because you've been good all your life. You're not here because you've done the right things all your life. But somebody ought to say, somebody prayed for me one day. Yeah, it was somebody. When I was all messed up, somebody prayed for me. When I didn't have no get right about me, she prayed for me. Somebody ought to shout. I thank God. When my my own folk wouldn't pray for me. There was somebody in the church uh, who had enough sense uh, to go down on their knees uh, and mention me in prayer. Uh, look at yourself right now and tell yourself, uh, I'm not here because I've been so good. Uh, I'm not here because I've done everything right. Uh, but somebody prayed for me, uh, had me on their mind, took a little time to pray for me. Uh, if you accept excited about it, somebody ought to clap your hands and tell God thank you right now. I thank God. Ah, yes, I thank God. You've been a mother to me when I couldn't pray for myself. I thank you right now. When I couldn't find a way out of no way, you prayed for me. Are you glad about it? Somebody say yeah. Let me help you. We're going to shout here. We're going to go home. But lean over at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, when a woman prays, something got to happen. Now, every woman ought to shout it right there. Now, men's, I get with y'all on men day. Let me say that again. When a woman prays and she's praying in the right spirit, tell, tell your neighbor, something got to happen. Y'all still don't want to help me right here. When a woman prays and she's in the right spirit, something has to happen. Y'all still don't want to talk to me. Come here. Come here, Hannah. 
Hannah said, Hannah over in the book of Samuel, she said, I've been praying all day long. Matter of fact, I pray so much uh, that folk think I'm crazy. The man of God said, I look like I'm drunk. Uh, but she said, I'm praying. Uh, and the more I pray, uh, how many of you know God will answer your prayer? Uh, yeah, she prayed all night long. Uh, and then the man of God said, God has heard your prayers. And when you come back this year, give God thanks for it. Oh, uh, and I'm saying right now, mamas, there's some things that need to be birthed next year. But I need you to start praying for it right now. I have some things that need to happen, but I need my mamas to start praying right now. They may say you're crazy, but keep on praying. Somebody may say it don't make no sense, but keep on praying. Somebody tuck their hands off your children, off your child, but you keep on praying. Things look bad in the household. Husband don't want to act right, but you keep on praying. So you got to pray. And then, why, why Rufus' mama? Because it's something about a woman who's a protector. She's a prayer warrior, but she's a protector. Lean over and tell her, are you a protector? Now, you know, now, now, now let, me, let, me, let, me, let me slow up and I'm, I'm ready to go home. Because some Deacon McDonald don't put it out there and talk about we got to cook today. I can't get that 12 piece today, brother. You don't mess me up. Protector. Let me tell you something. Can I say it like this? We family. Come here. Whether your child is right or wrong, whether some stuff is all messed up, mama, protect it, Amen. Be a protector. I don't care what no one else is saying. The Bible says that Esther was a protector of her people. They were in bondage because they had done wrong. But she interceded for them that the hand of the enemy wouldn't hurt them. Protector. I'm going to talk this out. You got, mama, if you want good statue in the community, be a protector. Before the police get their hands on them, be the protector. Before they get all messed up in some stuff, be the protector. You know, you, 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 you know what? My mama used to say this all the time. God bless you. I know my brother, he, he, he going he gonna to witness. We used to mess up royally. And she'd say, I'm going to take my hands off of you. And then 30 seconds later, here she come with a belt. Oh, is that what you call taking your hands off us? But let me tell you something. I thank God for every time she came and snatched us off of a block. I thank God for every time we messed up, she came to see about us. And I thank God even when we was in the wrong, she wouldn't let nobody talk about us. But she would, But when we got home, we got the law of Moses. Am I talking to anybody up in here? And if you're going to be a protector of this generation, the Bible says that you got to raise your hand and you got to let the enemy know that you're in the building. And I need about five of y'all this morning maybe about 10 of y'all women that's going to raise your hands and say I don't see it right now but I'm protecting my children I'm protecting my grandchildren I'm protecting my nieces I'm protecting my nephews I'm protecting my household devil you can't have them no weapon formed against them shall prosper I'm interceding right now in the name of Je I dare you to raise your hand and tell the devil before you get them you got to come through me I know they ain't right I know they done wrong but they are mine somebody say they are mine and if God gave them to me I gotta take care of them somebody say You got to, you got to recognize, Kim, you know.
know you don't lie, but you don't fix up a lie so your mama won't kiss the first lie. And the more you talk, she said, uh-huh, you're lying. <laughs> it's, that's something, it, uh, let, let me put it like this. I know this is not biblical, but there's some stuff God just put in women that we'll never recognize or figure out. Uh-huh. I try to help my boy out. I said, look, man, before you go in now, just tell the truth. Because she already know. Just tell the truth. She already, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to get you five licks off the whooping right now. Just tell the truth. But you know, you go, but mama, but mama, but, I said, oh, I'm upstairs. It's just something. God has put a nurturing mechanism in the, if, if bears will take care of their cubs, right? If dogs will take care of their puppies, Matter of fact, I, 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 I watched this thing. It says a penguin can be on a, a sheet of ice, and it can be thousands of penguins, thousands of them. But if that one penguin cries out amongst them thousand, that mama can recognize. Uh-huh. Mamas, have you ever just laid in the bed and, and child somewhere and, and something wakes you up and you know something wrong? Are they, they, they somewhere they ain't got no beat? Yeah. I, I know. So I need you to be a protector because Paul needed protecting. That's why she was a mother to him. And then third and finally, she had to teach him how to praise God. Y'all y'all, y'all missed, y'all missed the shout. Paul said, I was the chief of Pharisees. He was very religious. He was very traditional, but he didn't know how to praise God. Uh huh, and and I can remember as way back, as far back as my great uh, or my grandma, Leela May Scary. I can go back that far. That on Sunday morning, y'all know what I'm talking about. When they had, the, they used to call it the component set. It had the TV and the eight track and the record player all together. And, uh, and, and I can remember on Sunday morning, y'all, while she was finishing up her Sunday dinner, which she started on Saturday night. Come on, somebody. I, 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 I remember as she was sweeping the floor and she would tell uh, my, my uncles and I to get up. It's time to go to church. Uh, but, but, but before we got dressed, uh, she had to turn it on uh, WHYZ. Y'all know what I'm talking about. The, the, the gospel hour. And she had to listen to Reverend Ike first. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And then after Reverend Ike, she had to listen to the gospel true notes. Uh, and then she had to listen to Mahalia Jackson. Uh, and, and in the midst of all that going on, uh, we may have felt one way, but we understood it was something about the praise in the house. Uh, we didn't have much. Uh, Grandma worked hard as she could, uh, but she taught us how to praise God. Uh, do I have a witness up in here? And I want to know, can I get the women, can I get the mamas in this house uh, to show the people of God how to praise God? Uh, can you stand on your feet uh, and tell somebody real quick uh, that God is a good God. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Look at somebody and tell somebody the reason I'm standing right now because he's been away out of no way. He's been food on our table. He's been clothes on our backs. He's been our doctor in a sick room. Tell somebody when you trust God, he will make a way. Is there any Anybody in here, any woman in this house, you know about the Lord and you can tell somebody, I put my trust in God because he's been there. Things may get rough, but trust God. You may have to walk by yourself, but trust God. You may have to cry sometime, but trust God. Is there anybody that's in the house that's going to trust God if you know who the Lord is say yeah say yeah say yeah and watch this 
You've been a mother to me. I'm going to call Ro, and I'm going to leave you alone. I talked about saints of old. But Louise, you've been a mother to me. For when my back was up against the wall in my house, that's why my son's name is Zedric. I thank you. Dee Dee, you've been a mother to me. When I had to fly out the day that my son comes home, guess who's in the picture holding my son? You, you've been a, you've been a mother to me. You hear me? And I thank you. Amanda, you've been a mother to me. Because when I couldn't get to my family, you, you're more than a sister-in-law. I thank you. I thank you. Miss Gardner, you've been a mother to me. Even though sometimes I can see in your eyes I've disappointed you, but you never publicly embarrassed me. I thank you for being a mother to me. Yolanda, Lord help me. You've been a mama to me. <laughs> for when I wanted to give up, you would call me at some crazy time and ask me, what you doing? Don't you think you need to do so? Yolanda, I don't. Nah, this is what you need to do. Thank you for being a mother to me. Tot, tot. Thank you for you are the biggest silent cheerleader a preacher could ever have. Folk will never understand the godly relationship that we have, but you are such a cheerleader. Nisa, you've been a mother to me because you had to teach me and show me and groom me. You had to take my failure along with some success and call me your man. So I thank you for that. I thank you for that. And I don't take motherhood lightly. Both of my grandmas are gone. And Lord knows that's not a library that can hold the knowledge that they poured. Not it's nothing. Between Leela May and Beatrice, this is what I am. And to my own mom, who is a warrior, fight when she don't want to fight. And, and, and I'm going to say this, anybody that knows Lois Freeman, she can love you, discipline you, all at the same time. It's all about how you take it. But she always told me this, and she told my family, my brothers and my sisters, you be real with yourself. Don't you worry about what other folks think. Because at the end of the day, it's between you and the Lord. Mamas, I need you to be prayer warriors. I need you to be protectors. And I need you to be praisers. When you see Rufus' mama in this scripture, she had to tell the man of God that. Because you got to remember, who else, when he knows he's getting ready to die, no, he talks about, I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. Now it's later for me. Man, you about ready to get beheaded. And you talking about, you fought a good fight. Someone in his transition, in his transaction from, from, from sinner to saint, told him, can't nobody, Paul, do you like Jesus. Can't nobody do you like the Lord? So, brothers, if y'all don't mind, and we're going to get on out of here, let us salute the women of this house. All of you, you are special to me. God bless you all. And let's just give them a big hand clap of praise right now. Yeah. And this morning as we open our doors of this church, if you don't mind, brothers, uh, and we can allow the women, all the women to come to this altar and let's cover them, if you don't mind. If all the women, if you are able, 
I want you to come to this altar because you, you have a Herculean of a job. Yes, sir. Amen. What a beautiful, just, just, just a beautiful rose garden of, of who you are. I want y'all to stay strong. Let me tell you this. Church needs you. Church needs strong women. Y'all the one that nurture and birth the doctors, the dentists, the teachers, the lawyers. And uh, we go extinct if y'all do. And I'm going to say this. Young, 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 well, can I say it like my grandma used to say it? We all family, right? Young gal. <laughs> but young women, do not throw up a wall if it's in the right spirit when you are approached by a mother in the church. I'm telling you, they're getting extinct. And when they come and they come and talk to you, and mothers know how to come and talk to them, all right? Don't beat them up. You know what I'm saying? I don't know I'm doing wrong until you tell me, but it's how you tell me. Right? So, you know, there, there used to be a time when the village nurtured. You know, brothers went off and we gathered our manhood. And women went off and they learned how to be women. And that's the, that's the church right there. Let the church be the church. Instead of, you know, instead of my, my older generation waiting for the younger generation to extend themselves, you go get them. Extend yourself and say, look, we're we going to sit down and we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about this. They need it. So I'm going to pray that, that that union of motherhood just take place and that for those who, who are not biologically, you know, y'all like the Green Berets. Y'all can go in at any time. Get it done. Come back and they wonder what happened. <laughs> it need, we, we need it. There was a time that the women were the, uh, the stronghold of the church. And watch this. And when men came in the church, they were so submissive that they turned it over to the men. Yeah. Because, brothers, you, you know what we were doing. We were out there drinking liquor, chasing women. Uh, 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 gambling and all that other come on we come to church on homecoming and that was it but mom and the children went to church but we messed around and got saved and sanctified and then we want to come to church but watch the woman because she knew who the man was and didn't want to hurt his feelings she submitted herself and she allowed him to take leadership in the church you see that that's the greatness that y'all have so I'm going to pray for that greatness to continue to rise up in you, that it continue to move, and that you'll continue to motivate it. So, Lord, I thank you for the women of this house, young and old. I thank you, Lord, that we are blessed to have the mighty women of God who have birthed uh, into us plan and purpose, have given us vision. Lord, wherever they're at in their walk right now, strengthen them. Help them. Lord, let them continue to be sincere to the matters of the church and their home in the world. Let them be praisers right now. Let, 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 them, let them know how to praise and show us how to praise. We thank you for them, Lord. They are beautiful. They all have special gifts. They all have special abilities. They are great, Father God. We are looking at greatness at this altar, Lord. Do not allow the enemy to stop them, but let them continue to believe in themselves. I thank you in advance, Father, for young and old. I thank you right now. In the name of Jesus, 
We cover them with the Holy Spirit. Heal their bodies. Heal their minds. Heal their broken hearts. Heal them right now, Lord. And we thank you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let us celebrate the women of this house. Thank you. Now, again, I'm not going to put all that on me, but I'm going to do this. Deacon McDaniel said <laughs> that you got to take him to dinner. Now, because a lot of times people say, Pastor said, no. Deacon McDaniel said that you got to take him out. Y'all hear me? Deacon McDaniel said, you got to take him. And I just felt the spirit move when he said that too. <laughs> so, you enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, I know many of us will go by graves and put flowers on our mother's graves and things of that nature. Uh, but let us, let, let us just be thankful. When someone say to you that Mother's Day, ain't, it's, not, it's not biblical. I don't see it in the Bible. Take him to Jesus at the cross, all right, and and tell him and tell him that you know it was your mama that helped you know who Jesus was, right? All right. So, Amen. So let us all stand. Now, Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this beautiful day with beautiful people. God, we continue to ask for increase in knowledge. We pray that we take what, we pray that what has been said, that we will uh, magnify it in our lives and our community. As we leave this place, we ask that we're never separated from thy presence. May your glory, may your peace, may it always rest, rule, and abide with us, hence now and forevermore. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day again.